Hey everyone and welcome to another video of the Buster Monkey. How are you guys doing? We're almost at the season finale of 2020. I hope you're all doing great. Today we're gonna look at a new painting I did for my personal series called Killers. You might recognize this girl, she's Maggie and you probably saw her here and here. Two previous paintings that I did for the same series. As the title suggests, today we're gonna be in a more urban scenario. We're gonna be dealing with something more structured and, you know, that needs to be cleaner than just like a forest where we're more organic and free to do whatever we want. We're still free, but with different things, you know, we have to follow some different rules, some different ideas, lighting, composition, blah, blah, blah. This particular painting is set right before the two paintings that you just saw. So they haven't had the fight yet, the car is clean, no bullets, nothing, nothing yet. Of course, I'm gonna be covering all the process, why I did a certain things and uh, blah, 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 you know. Right after the painting, please don't leave because today I'm gonna answer the best, the most asked question ever that I got from you guys, which is about my setup. So I decided to just make some nice footage of what I have, the basics that I use, the basics that I have around my workspace. I hope you like it, it's super fun to do this kind of stuff, but let me know if you're interested to see more of this, more in depth, more stuff that I use. So it's a rich video today and I'll have to talk more than I usually do. <laughs> Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet and you like my work and let's go to the painting. Okay, this is the very first sketch. As always, let's take a look uh, on how I started this painting from scratch. This is made in Procreate, awesome app from the iPod Pro. And um, well, you can see it. it's a mess. The perspective doesn't really work, but the idea is there. All the proportions will be adjusted in the cleanup, which is this one. Things are starting to take shape here. You can see the, the guy is actually bigger in the foreground. It would be actually even bigger at the end. But uh, I took my grid, you will see in the painting, on and off, uh, even for, uh, for the color process, but for this one was very important. Uh, I just wanted to have some depth. On the left side of the painting, you see some buildings going further back, and uh, of course, some strong foreground, and a clean, simple uh, middle ground where we sit our subject. First thing first, I just start separating every element uh, of this painting, uh, so to make my life easier. I know this process takes time at the beginning, but you need to do it well, because uh, the pr precision and the design that you're gonna establish in this moment is gonna actually save a lot of time later on, and uh, you have basically half of the job done once this thing is done and ready and clean. I'm not caring too much about the color that I'm gonna put in this shape. As long as I understand what it is, they are separated in a, in a good way. Of course, if you have already an idea in your mind on how it's gonna look like, if you have a color key to match uh, and you're gonna do the final painting, of course you might wanna start with something already close enough, close enough to give you an idea, but at this point in this particular painting I was just going with the flow and uh, not thinking too much. Of course, the main locker color is there uh, in some things, but you will see at the end it's gonna look completely different. If you look again at the very initial sketch that I showed you, you will see a transition between a gray at the bottom and a bright top, which in my head that was basically just the idea of having a cold bottom, a cold street and uh, surfaces on the walls and then uh, everything is uh, lit from the top uh, in a very cool, uh, warm way, uh, like a sunny day through, through these buildings, uh, showing our subject uh, standing out from uh, everything else. And here she is eating a sandwich, waiting for Simon, and he's doing something, we don't know what yet, but uh, she's waiting there, she doesn't really care, she's not even that comfortable, I know. Uh, but uh, I thought it was interesting to show her in this, in this way, waiting without actually showing the act, uh, what Simon is doing and where we are. You can see also the city is not gonna be a clean city, like a nice uh, looking... Uh, place that people want to live in there at least that was the intention you will see at the end it's gonna be pretty dirty but uh, I still had a lot of fun with the texture of the on this wall talking about walls I just started on the selection that I did earlier on uh, rendering a little bit the glasses the walls uh, reflections having fun and starting with the middle ground I always render everything around the subject first in this case especially because the car is gonna be reflective so I need to know what's around and make something believable and uh, also the sooner I would nail the atmosphere of the, of the overall painting the better to also shade characters to shade her and also to know mentally where I'm going and be and feel comfortable as soon as I can 
when I would get to a decent stage on something, I would jump immediately on something else. I wouldn't push something too far. Also because I want to try to establish how much detail I'm going to have in that middle ground. That would dictate how much detail I'm going to have in the foreground and as well how much detail I'm going to have in the background. I immediately realized that this would have been a pretty busy scene at the end. I was starting to put a lot of texture. There are, you know, few characters. Uh, there's a lamppost on the left. There are lots of things lots of texture on the on the street like I'm putting now so I, I would have to start to plan things in a way that not everywhere is super busy and super noisy in terms of image what you're seeing me doing right now is just rendering the middle ground a little more because I know that the focus area is there so these lamppost needed a little bit of extra care in terms of uh, understanding the material and reflections and uh, all these little details that we're gonna be missing the closer we get to the camera and the further back we get from the camera remember to add a little bit of uh, extra life uh, to your painting for example here I'm putting like uh, magazines on the ground uh, coca-cola can a little bit of dirt something that makes it more more real especially a city a urban place like this doesn't have to feel too clean too polished even if again we're not gonna be super detailed but at the same time find a middle way is comfortable and stylized at the same time and I'm finally jumping on the car here I think I have a good understanding of this surrounding so I just wanted to figure out uh, how those reflections will look uh, how many uh, the style also I have a limited amount of uh, brushes here that I'm allowing myself to use I wanted to keep it consistent with the other illustration so this is just for me I, I need to make this kind of good if you put this on the side with the other paintings for you it might be completely different because you have your own style maybe it's not part of a, of a series of paintings that you can go completely nuts with styles and uh, details or simplicity I'm spending a good amount of time on this car and having it all separated because within the shape it's all separated so you guys don't forget to actually have all the controls that you need to make something clean uh, separate spend the time to clean your shapes and uh, have it nice if you don't want to keep the line when you want to keep the line it's just easier because the edges don't really matter if if you have a black line that is clean or whatever when you know that you're gonna remove the line you want to make sure that especially a car like this with clean shapes that's a big part of uh, liking it or making it like uh, appealing recognizable every time we see it instead of being like uh, wonky and uh, messy all the time proceeding toward the foreground we find the guy and his van and uh, I knew that this guy was very secondary uh, I didn't want to spend too much time on it so I knew having it dark and uh, yes reflective and detailed but of course it's not gonna be crazy I allow myself to use Gaussian blur in my paintings in this series so I knew also so that he would be a little blurred at the end not too much so that wouldn't give me any reason to extra detail him because a lot of things would be completely lost so also know in advance how much you want to paint on something and how much we're gonna see about it and next we have these two guys I knew that their silhouette would be pretty prominent in the painting but I needed this extra layer of uh, depth uh, which they add they're very simple they're not very well detailed but they're there and you see at the end of the painting how I divided them a little bit with a very light atmosphere Sphere. I think they work and they do their job and they add life to the painting which is always fine last but not least it's Maggie's turn and uh, I start from her skin it's still too bright but I just wanted to also play a little bit quickly uh, on light direction and uh, how she might look also exaggerating a little bit the reflection of the car uh, underneath and remember again this might be for an animated thing whatever but remember to push things a little bit all the time either up or down but uh, push something style color make your ideas easy and clear to read don't let the audience wondering what you were trying to, to say in this way you are sure that the statement that you're trying to say is understood on the side I also prepared a flat version of what it could what the background could look like even if it's gonna be super simple and easy uh, I thought that it would be much faster just to do it flat and uh warping it and distorting it to match the background and match the perspective that I wanted and also then add those little extra details that would allow me to fit it into the perspective that I wanted so the, the depth of those windows and everything you can see that I kept the shadows on the right side for example so we can read a little bit inside those windows from the angle that we're gonna look at them 
everything will make much more sense later when I'm gonna place it actually in the background. You just see now that I got carried away a little bit with details and look of it. I was having lots of fun in these buildings, kind of almost forgetting about the <laughs> painting that I was doing before. But that's also the process and uh, enjoy every part of the painting, my friends. <laughs> I will be posting this building separated from the painting on my socials if you guys wanna look at it. Uh, but again, it's nothing crazy. You can see it's just simple. Some signs, uh, pizza, because pizza is great. But as I mentioned before, I always ask yourself how much you have to paint because something might be lost. In this case, I was like, okay, maybe I better place it and see what we see. Because uh, as you can see, I lost a big part of it. Adding those little extra details to fit it into the perspective and some shadows and lights, pushing it back with a layer, a blue layer in this case, I think it was on screen, painting a quick taxi just to add a an extra layer to push those even further back. And at this stage, all the elements are there. So you see me just jumping back and forth, adjusting things, her hair, detailing things that I left behind before, her glasses, they are a big central point uh, to understand where she is. I also added a tree on the left just to add e even more separation and extra texture and an extra person because why not? I also extended those buildings on the right because I was like, uh, I can push them again. Going back to pushing the style, they were too normal, too boring I think, so I think they look better right now. And here it is, after some uh, quick color correction and brighten it up a little bit because I figured maybe one day it would be printed somewhere. I'm gonna make some prints so all the foreground would have been completely black because it was very dark. Who knows what the next adventure for Maggie and Simon will be. Checking on that first idea that we had, which is having the top warm and the bottom cold, I think we kinda ended up with something following that principle, but much more colorful I would say. But now back to the other me. And this is it my friends, I hope it inspires you to jump into Photoshop right now and create your own story. But before you jump into Photoshop, wait because I'm gonna explain to you quickly my setup now. Starting with my loyal Cintiq 27. If you're an artist you probably know what I'm talking about. I've been using uh, Cintiq for 12 years now and that's just the best companion to get the job done I think. The 27 is just a choice uh, after changing many of them I think it's the perfect size for me. It's not too big, it's not too small, you can keep a lot of things in your, in your screen and, you, and no uh, I'm not sponsored by Wacom <laughs> unfortunately. And next, this is a quick one, this is just a MacBook Pro from uh, last year, I think. Uh, of course, this is just a tool, what you can do with this one, you can do it with both PC and Mac, it's just a personal preference. This specific one is the i9 version, 32 gigs of RAM, and it has the Radeon Pro Vega 24 gigs as a graphic card. And yeah, just great. This is the awesome BenQ WIT reading lamp for the best lighting customization when I have to paint. Uh, light is fundamental, we all know that for digital artists, especially when you deal with colors. This BenQ light can adjust not only the intensity but also the temperature, giving you the best scenario that you choose without being completely alone in the dark in your room and we all know that feeling when we paint. It also reduces the glare on your screen, uh, it's very diffuse light uh, and it looks really cool I think. This one is the Yeti, the microphone that you are hearing me from. It's a crisp quality for video calls, podcasts. I've been using it for many, many years now. It's always the same one and it's really cheap, guys. Last but not least, the thing that we have to trust the most, <laughs> our hard drive. This is the SSD from Lacey. This is two terabytes I, with USB-C perfect for my Mac, super fast. I mostly use it as an archive so my Mac doesn't get full and also for a time machine, basically a backup for my computer if it decides to die. There's one little extra thing that I want to ask you guys, what do you think, let me know. I was thinking of opening a Discord channel just for us, just for our community, where you can share your thoughts, your ideas, gather together, talk about art, have fun and send me your paintings, your drawings, your sketches, your ideas and uh, we can talk about it in some next videos. What do you think? Is it something you might be interested? I see many artists doing this, so why not? I promise we're done. Please like the video, subscribe and send it to your friends if you think they might like it. Find me on Instagram, Twitter and Tumblr. Good old Tumblr. Check out my prints on ArtStation and my book. That's right, <laughs> I made a book. Uh, it's digital version of course, thanks to COVID that didn't allow the physical version for now. But if you are interested, I'm gonna cover lots of VizDev uh, 
stuff. There's all my work in there, so just check it out. Links are in the description below. Thank you for the amazing support as always because this channel works because you guys are watching it and you give me the strength and the, the energy to keep going and make more videos and make more paintings as well. I see you in the next video.